There are not enough superlatives to describe what happened in Qatar on Sunday, December the 18th. Argentina won their third World Cup title on what was a momentous and magical day of football. Lionel Messi has finally led his side to the promised land and etched his name into history as perhaps the greatest and most storied footballer of all time. The game in Lucille will go down in history as the best World Cup final ever. On the day that the greatest player ever finally won the only trophy that he didn't already have in the cabinet. The iconic images of players like Diego Maradona and Pele kissing the famous trophy was what the world wanted for Lionel Messi. He has now won everything that there is to win and has cemented his cult status in history. Kylian Mbappe played the part of the evil villain so incredibly well during this final. He almost single-handedly spoiled the Argentina party. Perhaps the best ever losing performance in a World Cup final, Mbappe became only the second person ever to score a hat-trick in a final, with two cool and calm penalties either side of an incredible volley. France, at moments, were within touching distance of the trophy themselves in what was truly a roller coaster final. During this World Cup, we have had some incredible surprises and marvellous games, but this final topped them all. France and Argentina arrived at the final, both full of confidence. They had been the best two teams in the tournament and Lionel Messi and Kylian Mbappe had been the best two players. Viewed as the greatest player of all time and the next best player in world football, this final had a narrative that FIFA could only have dreamed of. Would Messi haul Argentina to a famous victory or would Mbappe dethrone the king and announce himself as the top dog in world football? As they have done all tournament, the Argentina fans created an amazing atmosphere in the Lucille Stadium before the game. The floodlights were on and the feeling in the air of a special night was palpable. Whichever way this one went, it would be the third star on the jersey for Argentina or France and a crowning moment for their number 10. Who had you back to take the spoils before kickoff? Two rousing national anthems later and we were underway. There were a few nice adjustments on the fashion front to avoid any kick clash. France were in a slick old blue outfit instead of their usual tricolour with blue jersey, white shorts and red socks. The French looked the part, their kit numbers shining in gold, a tribute to their title in Russia in 2018. Argentina wore their traditional blue and white stripes with white shorts and white socks. Just like they did when they defeated Brazil in the Copa America final 18 months ago. Argentina on the pitch looked far more comfortable. In the first half they completely dominated the game. France looked unsettled and made a few schoolboy errors at the back that led to waves of Argentinian pressure and some last ditch defending. Hugo Lloris had to be on form too as Argentina ruled the ball in midfield and used the channels well to create attacks, especially down the left hand side where Angel Di Maria was having plenty of joy against Jules Koundé. In the 22nd minute of the game, Di Maria found himself on the ball, again deep in the French half, this time facing Ousmane Dembele in a one-on-one -on -one at the byline. He sold the French winger a brilliant dummy and drove inside towards the box. Using his experience, Di Maria made sure he got in front of the chasing Dembele and the contact was inevitable. The eager Frenchman clipped Di Maria and down he tumbled. The referee awarded the penalty to Argentina and yet again in this tournament, Messi was tasked with keeping his cool from 12 yards. Messi calmly sent Lloris the wrong way and the Argentina fans went wild. They were 1-0 up in the World Cup final and they were playing magnificently as well. The pattern of play continued for the rest of the half. Rodrigo de Paul, Enzo Fernandez and Alexis McAllister were incredible in midfield on and off the ball. France didn't seem to have any of the answers. Argentina had shown up knowing they were one final push away from the famous trophy. They matched true grit and intensity with some fabulous quality in passing. In the 36th minute, the South Americans doubled their lead in style. A stunning counter-attack ripped through the French team. A pass around the corner from Lionel Messi to Julian Alvarez unlocked the door and put the attack in motion. Alvarez then played a through ball into hordes of space behind the France defence and Alexis McAllister met it in his stride. At this stage, fans were off their seats. Argentina had a clear two-on-one situation with Di Maria binding up the left-hand side. If McAllister could find him, it would be a huge chance for the winger. McAllister did just that and slid the ball to Di Maria out of reach of the last France defender. Di Maria made no mistake, cleverly passing his shot into the ground so it would bounce over the onrushing Loris into the far side of the net. 
Di Maria wheeled away in celebration and the roof of the ground lifted. Argentina had dominated. They were carving through France with ease and now they were 2-0 up. Beforehand, the idea that this game would be a comfortable victory didn't really cross anybody's mind. But after Di Maria's goal, you couldn't help but think that Argentina were well on their way to lifting the trophy. Didier Deschamps even made two changes before halftime, sacrificing two of his top players, Olivier Giroud and Ousmane Dembele. They were replaced by Marcus Thuram and Randal Kolomouani, who would later have a big part to play in this final for both brilliant and agonising reasons. The halftime whistle was blown to a choir of Argentine cheers. Some may have questioned if France would have been one step too far for the Albi Celeste, as was the case with Morocco and England, and even for Croatia, Belgium and Argentina themselves at the last World Cup. But as the teams went down the tunnel, it seemed that this could not have been further from the truth. It had been Argentina that played like the bookies' favourites instead of their European counterparts. However, as always, and in keeping with the theme of this magnificent World Cup, twists and turns were yet to come. They say that a 2-0 is the most dangerous score in football, and Argentina have learnt this the hard way in Qatar. They squandered a 2-0 lead to the Netherlands in the quarterfinals, and they managed to do the same in the final. Kylian Mbappe scored two goals in as many minutes to bring France back to life and leave Argentina on the brink of an infamous collapse. Surely it couldn't end like this. It wasn't until the 80th minute that France were awarded a penalty and Mbappe slotted home to pull one back. Until that point in the second half, the game was definitely more even and France threatened, but they weren't nearly as dominant as Argentina had been in the first period. All of a sudden a dark cloud of doubt seemed to cover the Argentina players and fans. It was game on for Le Bleu and Kylian Mbappe looked menacing when he got the ball. Just one minute after his penalty, Mbappe scored a fantastic equaliser. Seemingly consumed by the chaos, the Argentina defence was unlocked again and the game was flipped on its head in two minutes of madness. A long ball was drifted into Mbappe who played an instant 1-2 in the air with first half substitute Marcus Turam. The PSG superstar met Turam's return ball on the volley in superb style, perfectly executing his strike to drive the ball low and hard past Dibu Martinez. It had the air of a special and historical goal that might be the highlight in a reel of France World Cup winners 2022. Argentina looked stunned and on the ropes. Mbappe looked frightening and with 10 minutes to go the momentum in this game had taken a seismic shift in favour of the current World Cup holders. Mbappe had decided he did not want to let go of this title so easily and he galvanised a French side that had looked so subdued for most of the match. At half time in the game Argentina would not have been wrong to think they were well in control. 45 similar minutes of football would surely grant them the title, but the beautiful game is loved by so many across the world because of its ludicrous unpredictability and special special moments. This final gave us all of that and more, and perhaps the best was still to come. Argentina managed to hold out for full time, they desperately needed it. France finished the game in a confident groove and looked like champions who smelt blood and were primed for the kill. In unusual fashion, the period of extra time that followed the 90 minutes was equally as brilliant and perhaps even better than the game itself. This is particularly impressive as the first 90 minutes were also action packed and displayed some sumptuous football. Argentina found the second win they so drastically needed and despite looking completely derailed at the end of normal time, they found their feet again in Lucille. Extra time was end to end action and drama, a dream for the organisers as Messi and Mbappe went toe to toe. At times France seemed unnecessarily open at the back and Argentina took full advantage. Messi got his second to put Argentina 3-2 up after 108 minutes of football. A brilliant passage of play ended with Lloris parrying a Lautaro Martinez effort, but the chance fell to Messi and he prodded the ball over the line. France had work to do again to keep their own dream of back-to-back -back World Cup titles alive. Given the late drama in normal time, it didn't feel like Messi's goal would be the winner. And 10 minutes later, France found their equaliser. Mbappe was the man of the moment yet again. His shot from outside the box met an Argentinian elbow and the referee gave a penalty. Mbappe dispatched the spot kick with absolutely no nerves on display to complete his hat-trick and make it 3-3. A goal fest. That wasn't all though. Chances continued for both sides. Messi and Mbappe had both come close to scoring what might have been wonderful winning goals. Deep into stoppage time, 
Argentinian hearts skipped a beat, as France's other first half sub Colomuani raced through on goal. The through ball bounced kindly for him to slot home, but somehow he was denied by a miraculous debut Martinez save. France could not have been awarded a better opportunity. Time stood still as the forwards struck the ball, and it seemed certain that the holders were about to retain their title. But what incredible drama. Dibu Martinez will remember that save for the rest of his life, as will the whole of Argentina, and Colo Moani will rue what could have been his own moment for the history books. A spellbinding game of football finished 3-3, and the fate of Argentina and France would be decided by penalties. Whatever happened thereafter, football fans all over the world would need to get their breath back. Without doubt, the world witnessed a truly unbelievable game. It has to be the best World Cup final of all time. On numerous occasions, the game seemed won or lost for both sides, but they managed to battle it out with nothing to separate them on the scoreline, in what was an absolute classic. After their recent success in penalty shootouts and that miraculous last minute save from Dibu Martinez, you felt that Argentina just had the upper hand going into penalties. The coin toss decided that the penalties would take place in front of the Argentina fans, and moreover, there was still this idea lingering in the air that the most magical World Cup was set to end with the most magical image, Lionel Messi kissing the famous trophy. Destiny it proved had written it that way. Mbappe and Messi set the tone, both scoring their opening penalties, both cool as you like. They continued their outstanding examples, ones they had set all tournament for their teams both astonishingly composed in the most pressurised of moments. However, after three penalties each, Argentina were in the driving seat with a 3-1 lead, thanks to a Dibu Martinez save from Kingsley Coman and Chumeni's off-target effort. Gonzalo Montiel knew that if he scored Argentina's fourth penalty, they would be champions of the world. He made no mistake, and some metres behind him, Lionel Messi dropped to his knees on the halfway line. Embraced by his teammates, this was his moment and this was Argentina's time. A nation written into the annals of football history had created a new chapter and Messi had finally achieved what Diego Maradona had done in 1986. He had brought the World Cup home to Argentina. A game for the history books that will be talked about for many years to come. Argentina had won their third World Cup trophy and player of the tournament Lionel Messi had captained his country to the biggest prize of all completing a magnificent career that might still yet have a few years to run. Messi was destined to create his own iconic image with the World Cup trophy. He has done that now. France were worthy adversaries for the deserved champions Argentina on a day that won't be forgotten in Buenos Aires for centuries to come. What did you think of this year's World Cup final? Was it the best ever player winning the best ever final? Let us know what you think in the comments below.